Um, all right, hello everyone. This is a, uh, a basic tutorial on TTE image acquisition. Uh, to start, we're going to use the, uh, uh, the phased array probe. Um, this is our preferred probe for cardiac imaging um, because it's got a small footprint and allows you to look in between ribs relatively easily. It also provides a relatively high resolution of uh, the heart as well. So to begin, uh, we'll start with the personal long axis. Um, to identify the location for personal long axis, you ideally want to go in the third or fourth interspace, immediately left of the sternum, with the probe marker facing the patient's right shoulder. So I'll do that here. Ideally, you should see the heart in long axis. You should see the left atrium, the left ventricle, the left ventricular outflow tract, and a aortic valve. The, a portion of the thoracic aorta as well as a portion of the descending aorta. You should also see a part of the RV as well as the uh, pericardium. Uh, a properly obtained image will show the mitral valve in the center of the screen. It should be roughly aligned vertically with the aortic valve as well. And a non-foreshortened view uh, typically doesn't show the uh, apex of the heart. If you're having difficulty obtaining this view, you can try getting the patient to turn into the left lateral decubitus position. You can also try moving up or down in interspace and generally moving closer to the sternum will improve your chances of success. After obtaining the personal long axis view, uh, you want to obtain the personal short axis view. Um, to do that, you're going to go in the same interspace, the third or fourth interspace, immediately parasternal on the left hand side. However, you're going to have the probe marker towards the patient's left shoulder. Practically, this can be obtained by first getting a parasternal long axis and then rotating the probe with the image centered on the mitral valve, rotating the probe such that the marker faces the patient's left shoulder. So an image should display the uh, right ventricle in the near field and the left ventricle in the far field. There's multiple imaging planes that you can use to assess the parasternal short axis, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we'll focus on the mid papillary level, as that allows for a more reliable assessment of uh, LV systolic function. To obtain the mid papillary level, you may need to fan um, the probe either cephalad or caudad. And what you're looking for are the circular uh, cross sections of the papillary muscles coming out from the inner surface of the left ventricular wall. In addition, you should see the entirety of the left ventricle. Similarly, if you're having trouble obtaining this view, rolling the patient into the left lateral decubitus can help. So next, we'll talk about the apical four chamber view. This is arguably one of the more challenging views to obtain. It can help to have the patient turn into left lateral decubitus. Generally, the um, apex, which is the area you want to start imaging, is located in the midclavicular line in the fourth or fifth interspace. In males, this can be approximated uh, generally by going uh, left and inferior to the uh, nipple. In females, um, this can be approximated by going uh, in the uh, underneath the infralateral portion of the left uh, breast. So, to obtain this view, you want to find your apex, and you want to orient uh, the probe such that the markers facing down towards the stretcher. Ideally, uh, you should see all four chambers of the heart, including the mitral and tricuspid valve. You may need to make some motion, some movements to, to find uh, these internal landmarks. Oftentimes, angling the probe towards the patient's right shoulder can help with visualizing the four chambers. As mentioned, this is one of the more challenging views to obtain and it's prone to foreshortening, which can affect the accuracy of your uh, image interpretation. A non-foreshortened uh, apical forechamber should show the heart in a uh, oval shape or elongated shape, and it should not appear circular. All right, the next image we'll obtain is the subcostal forechamber. For this, you want the patient to lie supine. You're going to take the probe and place it immediately <clears throat> inferior to the xiphoid process with the probe marker facing the patient's left. 
It's important to depress the probe and fan slightly anteriorly to look at the heart underneath the sternum. You should see all four chambers of the heart and you should also see the tricuspid and mitral valve, as well as the inferior portion of the pericardium. The next view that we'll obtain is the subcostal IVC view. To obtain this view, place the probe immediately below the xiphoid process with the probe marker facing the patient's head. In addition, you want to be slightly right of midline. Practically speaking, this can be found by first finding a subcostal floor chamber and then rotating the probe such that the probe marker is facing the patient's head. Our area of interest is generally the junction of the right atrium and the IVC. You may need to angle the probe such that the handle is pointing upwards and the tail of the probe slightly caught at in order to find the junction of the right atrium and the IVC. Sometimes the IVC can be confused with the aorta. Some distinguishing features are that the IVC will have a junction with the right atrium. There will be a hepatic vein joining the IVC, and the IVC is encased with hepatic tissue. The aorta, of course, doesn't have these junctions and is also encased in uh, mixed-density hyperechoic fat. The last view we'll obtain is the subcostal short axis. This is a particularly useful view when you can't attain uh, any parasternal views and appears similar to the parasternal short axis. You find this view uh, similar to how you would find the IVC by placing the probe immediately subxiphoid with the marker towards the patient's head. However, you're going to want to fan to the patient's left or towards the heart in order to obtain this view. It should appear similar to the short, parasternal short axis view with the right ventricle in the near field and the left ventricle in the far field.